we're all here. Okay, um, Corporation Township of Wayfleet, I uh, call this uh, special meeting uh, of May 14th, 2020 to order. Is there any disclosure of pecuniary interest, general nature thereof? Okay, seeing none. Um, so what we're gonna do tonight, we've put together some uh, staff reports just to go over the fire hall stuff again. So we get all the facts back, get grounded on what's important and what's the, what the information is that we were working off of. And so the first one will be the uh, fire chief will read the uh, chronology of what's happened so far, just so we're all on the same page and we're all refreshed on that. So I'm gonna look to the uh, chief there to start that please. Good evening, Mayor and uh, members of Council. Um, yeah, the purpose of this, uh, this quick report, uh, just to quickly kind of highlight um, the, the steps that have taken um, up until the beginning of, uh, of where we hit pause, kind of when the, the COVID situation occurred, um, and just as kind of a refresher of all the phases that have, uh, that have gone on. Um, so certainly, as you can see in the background, um, we purchased the land. Uh, this was on... Uh, this is on the, uh, the information that was provided to us from the master fire plan that was developed in 2012, 2013, uh, that said, you know, certainly if the land's ever to the property next to what we already had, come available, purchase it, so that way we had enough space uh, for a fire station, training area, and so on. Um, so that was done. After that, in March, um, myself um, and, and uh, the CAO and mayor, um, or sorry, Richard, we went down to, uh, to NRP and we, we made a presentation to them um, about the potential for a shared facility to which they've uh, since declined. Uh, and then in April, um, uh, council approved uh, phase one, which was the land acquisition and the pre-construction studies and engineering. Um, of that, I believe in, in the next report that uh, the treasurer is gonna present uh, was kind of a, an expenses year to date. Um, and then in May, um, we kind of continued on. We've been in long, ongoing negotiations with Niagara Region for a shared EMS facility. Uh, through to June of October, uh, Council provided direction to staff um, to uh, dispose of the existing dwelling by way of uh, real estate sale. Obviously, as we know, that has since uh, been um, um, unsuccessful, uh, but also during that time, we had to begin the rezoning and official plan amendment for the uh, use. Uh, during that time, we also conducted uh, the site survey, the topographical survey, um, the traffic brief, geological, so that those studies have all been done and that was all budgeted for uh, as part of uh, phase one in 2019's budget. Then in um, 2000, or December 2019, council approved the zoning amendment um, so that way we could move ahead um, and, and there was that justification memo that was circulated around. Also in December, uh, there was the survey that went around to uh, council and the firefighters to kind of uh, get a gauge um, of what the priorities, the goals and objectives and kind of the project scope, what was what was really needed and, and expected. Um, and as, as we, we all know, the results of that survey was that, uh, you know, firefighter health and wellness, uh, long-term planning, um, energy efficient quality construction and cost effective construction were all priorities, both for council and the fire personnel. So based on the results of that survey, um, also looking at the recommendations of the master fire plan, the operational review that was conducted, um, the Ministry of Labor's orders, as well as the various uh, fire station guides that were all uh, uh, shared uh, in January, FSR 03 kind of uh, outlined the spatial needs assessment. Um, of course, that spatial needs assessment um, went through room by room, uh, compared it to the Ontario Building Code and, and uh, um, highlighted, you know, kind of what the what the needs and, and kind of the project scope of what the building was going to uh, to have, um, and with that uh, was, you know, kind of a breakdown of the square footage as well as a concept um, uh, drawing, just uh, as a as an idea. Um, following which, um, uh, that I mean, council uh, certainly, you know, took a look at that uh, and received that for information, and then requested that in February we conduct the fire station tour, which we did. Um, and at the, at the end of that uh, meeting in February, uh, Council had provided direction to us um, to engage as a design firm to develop uh, concept plans and cost estimates um, based on that spatial needs assessment and conduct a public meeting um, so that way the public would have a, an opportunity to view and have input. 
Um, and then uh, following that in March, uh, council approved the 2020 budget for uh, the, the fire station construction, fixtures, finishes, equipment, um, and all of the, the landscaping and everything else. And then unfortunately in March, April, now into May, um, the provincial, regional, and local states of emergency were declared, um, which kind of put a lot of our resources, staff resources into the emergency response and managing um, our response and then now the, the eventual plan, uh, recovery planning phase. Um, and so we, we, the, a lot of that was put on hold as kind of a cost containment measure. Uh, and then as we're all aware in uh, April uh, 28th, the special council meeting uh, was held to discuss the station um, to which there was a, a committee and now we're not. So this is, the, this is kind of a, a, a brief uh, history of, of how we've got to where we are today. Um, and uh, I know that there were some discussions about the financial considerations. And uh, so I know the treasurer has certainly worked hard to, to prepare those for you. Uh, and that's it for for this report. Okay, so I think what we'll do, um, if uh, it's an agreement, because um, the chief is going to do another report at the end here, and so we'll uh, we'll make a, uh, a recommendation here. The fire staff report FSR 006-2020 respecting Central Fire Station project chronology be received as information. So I just need a mover seconder for that. Uh, mover is Councillor Van Vliet, seconded by Councillor Cridlin, and we'll hold. Let's hold discussion until the end because the chief can do the whole thing in one big shot there because he's got the second report at the end. Okay, so recorded vote, Councillor. You're all muted. I was just going to say, if, if council has any questions on it, we can go through those questions um, and consider the report. But the dis debate can happen at the end. Okay, so any specific questions regarding that report, the chronology report? Okay, seeing none then, um, to move or seconder, I'll look for a vote on that. Councillor McClellan, to receive it. Can't hear you, I can read your lips though. Uh, Councillor Cridland? In favor. Uh, Councillor Gilmore? Can't hear you either. And uh, Councillor Van Vliet. In favor. Yeah, I'm unmuted now. Yeah, so that is carried. Okay, now we're gonna go, uh, we'll just do an overview again of the financial aspect of this. And we'll ask our treasurer, Ms. Louie, to give a brief report. So through the Mayor to all of Council. So the intent of this report is to highlight the background of the project from a financial perspective as well as identify expenditures incurred to date regarding phase one, which was approved in the 2019 budget, uh, which you can see on page two of ASR 16. Uh, the remainder of the report is to identify funding strategies related to the budgeted amount for phase two. So please keep in mind the, the proposals and the appendices are definitely flexible and the terms of the debenture are also flexible. And the, the exercise is simply just to provide information to council to prove that the construction of the central station is definitely affordable with minimal future tax levy impacts. Uh, so I know there is some hesitation around debentures. However, a responsible combination of debentures, use of reserves and tax levy increases is a prudent way to fund capital projects in Wayne Fleet considering our tax base and our financial restraints. Uh, so basically, just to summarize, in my professional opinion, considering the approved budget amount, which we recognize satisfies the spatial, the spatial needs of the fire hall and the fire department, is affordable for us with minimal tax levy increases in future years um, with an option or something similar to that that I presented in the appendices. Okay, thank you. So the motion uh, that uh, report FSR 007-2020 Project delivery methods and draft central fire station project charter be received as information. And, oh, I'm reading the wrong one here. My apologies, the wrong one. Um, the uh, motion is the administrative staff report ASR 162020 respecting the central fire station project financial overview be received for information. And if I could have a mover and a seconder on that, please. Mover, Councillor Van Vliet, seconder. Councillor McClellan, um, any questions to the treasurer on that? 
Councillor Cridlin, are you? Councillor Cridlin. Uh, it's through you, Mayor. Thank you. Um, again, thank you for the report. Um, I think I just, just see, I think I'd like to wait for the questions on this part of the agenda again till we move into the next part of the agenda. So um, if it's agreeable, then I'll save my questions till we get to the next part. Thank you. Actually, I would like uh, to go through all three reports and then we have questions and we can direct them how we want to direct them. I think that's probably the most efficient way. Uh, we just wanted to do these three reports as an overview uh, to make sure that all the information was front and center. So I have a mover and a seconder on this. Um, so the discussion will follow. Um, and so now I look for a recorded vote. Councillor Cridlin to receive this favor. report. Councillor McClellan. In favor. Councillor Gilmore. In favor. And Councillor Van Bleet. In favor. Thank you, that's carried. Okay, and uh, and uh, now we're moving on to, uh, hang on, uh, Chief Alcock to do his uh, final report there, please. Okay, so this is, uh, again, Mr. Mayor and members of council, this is uh, FSR 007. Um, with regards to um, the various options and mod delivery models, uh, as well as procurement and contract options uh, for the build. Um, this is the intent is to uh, answer any questions with relation to um, kind of the next steps and, and the progress um, of how we'd like to see this project continue. Um, so, I mean, starting off, um, there's, there's kind of three, three kind of components. The first is, you know, project delivery system. Um, you know, how do we want to go about um, managing the project? Um, the next piece after that would be what kind of procurement method are we going to use, whether it be a, an RFI, an RFP, a request for a quote. Um, and then if, if once we get to that point where we're ready to hire a contractor, what are we looking at for contracts? Are we looking at fixed price, reimbursable cost plus, or unit price? Uh, so that the intent of this report is just to kind of, kind of go through those different models, um, kind of highlight the recommended model and the recommended options. Um, and then part of all of this information is what uh, helps develop a project charter. And that project charter is kind of what uh, outlines the roles, responsibilities, uh, the scope of the project, um, the, the funding model that, that's backing it up, um, kind of uh, forecasts or, or, or um, predicts any uh, potential risks, um, any mitigation measures. Um, so th that's kind of uh, the purpose of this. Um, you know, so certainly, uh, I, don't, I don't know if you want me to go through the entire thing or, or if you've had the, uh, the time. So I'm, certainly I'm open to questions. Okay, that's, you're just gonna, that's it, your report. Okay, it's lengthy and detailed. Um, everybody's read the report, so uh, the motion, the report FSR 007-2020 project delivery methods and draft central fire station project charter be received as information and that the project proceed utilizing a design build project delivery model and that a request for proposals be undertaken to select suppliers for design and engineering works associated with the new facility and that a request for quotation tender be undertaken to select a general contractor for the construction of the new facility and that fixed price contracts be utilized as a preferred type of contract and that the project charter attached as appendix A to this report be approved by council. A remover and a seconder for that, please. Councillor Van Bleet, seconder. Councillor Cridland. Okay, and we'll get into um, discussion. So, any discussion on any of the reports? Councillor Cridlin, you're up. Uh, thank you to you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, and again, thanks to the Chief for um, putting so much uh, effort into this particular document. It's, um, it's excellent. So as uh, I, I thought it might make sense to talk, talk about the charter, I don't know where to start. So um, I don't, I think you've laid it out clearly. Um, uh, so I would just go to the charter 
and uh, look at the budget piece. And once that gets discussed, uh, and that would be my first place to discuss something. So uh, if somebody's got another way to tackle the discussion, I'm open to whatever method we get through the, the document. Well, the, the charter was the first thing uh, that came up there. So in the uh, in the motion, so let's discuss the charter. Uh, I'm well, a bit uh, curious about it as well. So who would like to speak to that? Well, uh, Councillor Cridlin. Thank you again. Then I'll continue if that's okay. So I'm going to go to page. Um, and sorry if this is jumping around a bit, but uh, I think it's page twenty six. Uh, so it's the one on budget. Um, and so my understanding is for, for me to be clearer on the components that are going to make up 4.5 million. So I know, uh, I, I'm, I'm comfortable with the, all the items obviously above the 850. Uh, and, uh, but I, I need to uh, know where we are in terms of discussion to go backwards around finance, et cetera, about the 4.5. And I don't know how to approach that. Would the, um, so you're specifically asking how we got to the 4.5? No, uh, thank you. Um, no, I'm okay with how we got there, but I think based on April 28th, um, I think uh, there's an interest in uh, making that a different number and doing a, either a phased or uh, something different. So this is where we landed up until all of the documentation that the chief has presented to us, which is excellent. Um, I'm just suggesting we start here and I'll ask the question then, is uh, 4.5 then still the number that the chief has in mind going forward? Now I'll look to the CAO, please. Um, through you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the 4.5 is the figure that was included um, as an estimate in the budget uh, for uh, the entirety of this phase of the project. Um, the reality of whether the final number is 4.5 or something other than 4.5 uh, will be driven uh, by a number of factors that we are still in the midst of exploring at this stage. Um, the direction that was given uh, by council at the council meeting following the tour of, um, of all the various facilities, I think we visited eight facilities across the region. Um, the direction that was given to staff was to um, seek some expertise from a design uh, consultant that could take the, uh, the needs analysis or the needs assessment that was undertaken um, and develop some concrete uh, estimates, more concrete estimates uh, based on uh, different construction methodologies, based on um, the current market rates and come back to council with uh, a concept as well as a better, more fine-tuned um, dollar figure that, uh, that, that we would be looking at um, in order for the project to proceed. Um, so I, I'm not sure if that answers the question, but the, the re sort of refinements about uh, where this project is going to end up, um, we're still in the process of getting to uh, a place where those refinements can, can occur. And again, I'm, I'm hoping I'm explaining that well, and I'm not sure if either the, the fire chief or the treasurer uh, might be able to add to that. Okay, I look to who would like to speak to chief or the treasurer? Chief? Yeah, right. I can. Uh, yeah, so I mean, certainly when, when we finished the station tour, um, uh, the direction from council was for me to go out and meet with a design firm um, to kind of come up with concept plans based on various construction styles and finishes um, to develop um, a couple of different uh, concept plans as well as um, 
uh, at costing estimates for what those would be uh, to give council kind of the, a better scope. Um, and then part of, part of that was uh, to develop um, a, a public presentation so that way the public had an opportunity uh, to see what was being presented and also, ha also have public input. Um, again, that 4.5, uh, that came from the spatial needs assessment based on market value that other fire halls are being built in the region for. Um, so that, that's where that came from. Uh, again, it's just an estimate and, and at, at, at that point in time, that was the information we had. Uh, you know, certainly I, I'd like to, uh, I'd like to think that once we, uh, once we engage the design firm and we get some, come some ideas back, um, then we can certainly, uh, you know, um, reconsider or, or discuss the station further. But uh, unfortunately, it, we've already kind of gone down the path of, of what was the priorities and objectives and goals. And that was the, that was the direction that was given to staff from council because we had all looked at that spatial needs assessment and said, yes, this is what we want to include in our program. Let's investigate it. Okay, uh, Councillor Cridlin. Uh, through you, Mayor. Um, thank you. Uh, so, um, again, this is my first time through a fire hall build. So, uh, if uh, I under so what you've explained is good in terms of the process. So, um, it sounds like we're about to go get some better numbers based on the work we've done. Um, so, uh, with those better numbers, uh, does that mean there's an opportunity for this to be two, two point five or three? I, I'm just not clear around. I know that we have all our specs in there, but then if we get to where we don't want all those specs, then that decision still is. You're you're saying that decision is still on the table for us in the future. We've like we've sent you away to do the four point five specs. Uh, when it comes back with whoever the professionals are uh, presenting that, then that's the next round for council to decide uh, whether or not we can afford it. Exactly. And, and that, that was the intent was council had approved what the priority was, what was needed. I mean, we went through and we did that, that needs assessment that met both today's needs as well as the long-term forecasted needs. Um, so I think that was, that was the intent all along, as well as building it that is um, efficient to run um, with quality construction that'll last. I mean, the last thing we want to do is, is build this and have to do it again in 30 years because the building isn't built to last. Um, so these were all the priorities that, that was shared um, as part of the survey. Um, and, and so, I mean, and again, in that spatial needs assessment, that is what determined kind of the size and the scope of, of the size of the hall. Um, you know, certainly if, if it comes back um, that, you know, and, and council's not comfortable with the, the, the 4.5 and they want it cut, then it's going to be up to council to again, determine what the priorities are and what the needs are, understanding that we've already done that. Councillor McClellan. Okay, that being said, I think $4.5 million is out of the question due to the situation the whole country's in. And I, I, if we go and get somebody to design something based on $4.5 million, we just wasted whatever money we're, we're giving them to do that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm in the 2 to 2.5 range in my mind, and I don't know where anybody else sits with that. I know you can do it. For that, you won't get as grandiose a place as, as we have on our drawings, but we will certainly get something that'll meet all of our needs and it's expandable with phase two. And, you know, we don't, we don't put ourselves in jeopardy because I don't know if there'll be any gas tax next couple of years. I don't know if there'll be other, any other funds coming to us. So our budget isn't what our budget is because we're not going to have the grants coming to us. Yeah, all valid points. Um, but again, coming back to what the chief said, uh, right now it's just a, an idea that we want to build a firehouse. And uh, so the dollar amount was, was our budget. We really, in my mind, need to, to follow the direction we gave earlier was to go out and find some or draw some pictures, and then we'll look at that. And then from there, we can start to 
you know, no, we don't need that, or we should maybe save a little here or cut that space down. That's the next step in my mind. Right now, it's we're just looking for some drawings. And I think at this time, to, to put a dollar amount to it or, or, or a specific size amount to it, we're doing ourselves an injustice. So um, that's not to say it's going to be four and a half million. Who knows? We don't know. We're, but we don't have drawings in front of us yet. So, Councillor McClellan. I, again, sir, once you spend the money, it's gone. The, the guy isn't going to change the plans from, from a four and a half million dollar building to a two point five million dollar building and not charge you to do it all over again. We, I think we've started way too high and we, we've got our set of our sites lower in dollar value. And uh, I mean, that's my belief. You guys, I'm only one of five, but I honestly believe we're gonna spend too much money. Okay, thank you. I saw the chief had his hand up there. Yeah, I understand that, that the intent isn't to go to architect or design firm right now and just say, here's the plans, here's, you know, just design us a building and make it fit the 4.5. The plan is to still go out there, get those three concepts, get those three construction types, the, the finishes, and give council the options A, B, and C within that. And then if that was that 4.5. That is why Mallory um, prepared that financial report to say that there is affordability factor built in at that level. Certainly if we want to cut lower, but then we're, we're having to readdress our needs. Councillor Van Vliet. Um, I agree with you, Mr. Mayor, and of course with the Chief too. I think that we need to stay the course. Just because we approved 4.5 does not mean that we have to spend 4.5. I mean, when I built my house, I had a budget. I came in under budget. Did I have the money to pay for it? Absolutely not. Got a mortgage for it. We already approved this, so I just think we need to see it play out, see what happens. Maybe we can build it cheaper. If somebody comes back way over our budget, we're like, okay, cool, or we, we don't need you. Move on to the next person. Like, I just think that we've done all the steps, we've approved everything. There was no, like when we did the budget, there was no, nobody, you know, did not approve of it. We all were on board with it and we all approved the 4.5. Nobody was opposed to that. And Mallory, and the treasurer showed us how we can debenture it and pay for it. So I just think that we need to stay the course. Let's play it out. Let's see what happens. And we approved that budget after the pandemic was declared. So we can't really use COVID as, a, as an excuse. Thank you. Um, Councillor Gilmore. Okay, I want to back up to um, the Appendix A, where on page 10 about the uh, option one, well, mainly option one, the serial debenture, because that's all I'm really interested in. And I need, I need, uh, I, I need to explain how the, like we got three years laid out and um, where, where the levy amounts going up, reserves are coming down and after three years we've generated a, a million dollars uh, with two, two and one. So I'm wondering, I'm wondering that's three years. So, so uh, I mean, and then after that, where, where are we going after that? And how does the two, two, one actually work? I mean, I, I, I think I have an understanding of it, but um, I, I also had I also had someone explain to me the understanding of the of the um, how the infrastructure levy was going to work too one time and it was uh, it was way way out and I'm not suggesting this is out I just need it to be clear for everyone's uh, um, thought process going forward. Okay, we look to the uh, treasurer to speak to that, please, Mallory. Okay, so through you, Mr. Mayor, to Councillor Gilmore. Um, so yeah, I only laid out three years just uh, so that people could read it basically for size. Um, and three years is when the impact will be fully absolved into our budget. Uh, so that's the reason why, why I chose three years. Um, so basically with a combination of offsetting the debenture costs getting into our budget using our infrastructure levy, um, it will be a 2%, 2% and 
likely less than 1% because I don't know what 1% will equal in 2022 and 2023. Um, I do know what it will equal in 2021. So I've just used that as, as kind of the benchmark. Uh, so we will offset it with the infrastructure levy, which uh, I'm not sure what, what your conversations were in the past with previous treasurers, but that is designed to help us fund capital projects. Um, and I do understand that uh, anything more than a 2% tax levy interest increase in current year um, it, it isn't feasible or responsible um, in terms of one project. So that's why we've kind of split it up this way to show. Um, and the serial debenture, um, it doesn't have equal payments each year if, you've, if you looked at the appendices that are attached. Um, so it's an equal amount of principal, but the interest is calculated annually. So that's actually even in, in line with your thinking of not wanting to kind of handcuff future councils as well as residents of the future, um, then this actually lines up extremely well if we can kind of stomach the, the higher costs up front because it is a little bit cheaper to do the amortizing debenture. However, once it's built into the budget, then we have that in there annually and we can just reallocate that to, to additional capital projects to help us close the gap and kind of contribute to our capital projects. Um, okay, so I need to go back to the 5.86 figure that, uh, that we talked about in previous meetings and try to, try to get my head around where, where that was coming from versus where, where this is coming from because the two aren't meshing for me and I'm, I'm missing something. Councilor um, Treasurer Mallory. So through you, Mr. Mayor, to all of council. So uh, you're not missing something. You're just, it's just two, you're not comparing apples to apples, mm -hmm. let's say. So the 5.86 that was proposed in the budget was if, uh, if we tried to introduce all of our repayments in one year for all of the capital projects that were proposed. So there was Jens Road Bridge, there was the SCBA and there was the fire hall. So if everything as approved, we brought in the debenture costs in one year, that would have been the, the tax levy increase in 2021, uh, which that was kind of proposed that way or presented that way rather, just to give you a perspective of, of the number and kind of, I, it's easy to approve things that don't have a current year impact. So we just wanted to kind of keep it in sight that there is gonna be future year impacts by approving these projects, even though we're debenturing them. So we just didn't want it to get too far, too far out of sight there. Um, however, with a project of this scope, um, recognizing that all of council I think is on the same page in terms of wanting to get this project built. Um, I don't think we can purchase any additional fire trucks that would actually fit in any of our existing buildings. So there's definitely a need uh, for a number of reasons, which everyone is supportive of. Uh, so this exercise is simply just to prove um, I wouldn't recommend uh, having a levy increase all in one year. Let's spread it out so, the, so that the financial impact is low amongst residents and we can still give them a quality product that 70 years from now, the councils of the day will be grateful that you guys made this decision. Councillor McConnell. Are you done? First of all, uh, Councillor Gilmore, are you finished? Um, I am for the moment. Okay, Councillor McCollum. Okay, so my other my question to the treasurer is: We've got nineteen million dollars worth of infrastructure that needs to get built. We do this. What's it going to do for getting those bridges back? The two million dollars here is at least one bridge, maybe two, depending on the size of them, that could be paid for with this. The, 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 we have too many bills sitting in front of us to, to go this route. It's, it's not the financially right way to do things. We've got $19 million worth of bridges that we have to build that Richard told us in the next 10 years. We're not gonna have the money to do this. I look to, uh, is there a question to the treasurer? Or yeah. Statement? Run the numbers and tell us where we're going to be in, in five years, what the debt loads are going to be if we have to build these bridges. We won't be able to borrow the money to do it. We might as well go and ask 
which municipality take your pick and see who would want to amalgamate with us because we're going to be broke. And I don't think anybody in town wants that to happen. Okay, I saw Councillor Cridlin's hand was up. Uh, thank you through you, Mr. Mayor. I just wasn't sure if the treasurer had something else though as a follow up first. Uh, so through you, Mr. Mayor, to all of council, I, I don't have those those figures re readily available. I mean, we can get definitely run some uh, reports from our asset management program and provide that. Uh, I mean, at some at some point, I do think hard decisions will need to be made, especially in terms of the bridge. The bridge, like we just did the exact same thing that previous councils have done with this bridge, which is why we're in the position we are with the bridges because everyone next year never comes, um, which is what we've been kind of doing with the fire hall. So at some point we, we, we definitely have to make a decision on some of these capital projects and, and move forward with them. But I can definitely come back with uh, some more solid numbers in terms of, uh, look at our plan was for next budget to have a 10 year capital uh, for all departments. But uh, if you would like to see something sooner than that in terms of this pro project, prior to us going out to architect, I mean, that would definitely delay uh, things because we're leading into our, our annual audits. Um, but definitely that's something that we can, we can do. Okay, thank you. Other discussion, Councillor Cridland. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, so we're on the finance part of the equation. Um, so again, if we're at the 4.5, that's still 5% increase, whether it's two, two and one, or two, one and two, it's still five from today. Uh, so that's still a lot. Um, and then for me, that's just the fire hall. So it's, it's sort of repeating what we're hearing, but um, uh, you know, we've approved a 10%, perhaps a 9%. Um, and if we're going to, if, if next year we're, I don't know this, but if we're looking at kind of a traditional 2% capital projects, because we still need roads and things done, 2% uh, levy, maybe this is replacing that 2%. It's not really been discussed yet. Uh, and then operating is in the range of X because of a mix of our operating budget, which is needed to run the place. Uh, so uh, the other things we haven't talked about, if we're going to be using a big number, is um, you know in 2021 when we've got it built at the end, uh, what is one year's annual run of a of 10,000 new square feet? I haven't heard a number on that. So if we're talking about big numbers, I need I still need way more financial data to build in behind while we're coming up to whatever the decision is next. Um, uh, you know, I don't know what the savings are. I don't know what we're capturing from taking down two fire halls that would happen in 2021. So again, at big numbers, I'll ask lots more questions. If it's a smaller project, I think we have a little bit of breathing room. So, um, I, you know, I, I still need more information and it sounds like that information is available. I don't know what maintenance has been on the last two, on the two old buildings, which is a key part of the charter. Uh, but we haven't seen what five years maintenance costs have been on these two old buildings, which is justified to, uh, you know, replace the new building. So we're kind of, you know, as the information comes in, it's going to continue to move forward. There's no question. Uh, but, um, I, you know, it, it, it's a lot of information. It's certainly, we approved a concept of 4.5. None of us want to stop this. So, uh, you know, again, at, at budget time, um, Yes, we still want to build a fire hall, but as more information comes in, then it's really for me about getting more, more, more data. So I know it's there, so I'll just wait for the treasurer to um, continue to provide what she's been providing for us today. Thank you. So um, Councillor Cridlin is looking for a fair bit of um, in-depth knowledge there and, and looking at the numbers. Uh, I look to the treasurer. Is that something that you could spend a, a couple hours or whatever with uh, Councillor Crillon and, and get those questions answered because uh, to do it in a, in a forum like this would be you know, a long time. So I'm just curious if that could be done one on one. So through you, Mr. Mayor, to all of council. So, uh, I mean, that's all the trouble is there's so many variables right now, like the expenses, the operating expenses on, on the proposed concept drawing would be much different 
than something significantly smaller. So um, I'm a little bit hesitant to kind of do a bunch of investigative work uh, on multiple scenarios when we don't have kind of a clear direction. I, I'm happy to do it in terms of if we have this option or this option. Um, okay. It's just the, the capacity to be able to do it for kind of 10 different scenarios or, or multiple situations uh, would be a little bit challenging right now, just considering the, the time of year that we're in. Um, so I think I would need a little bit more clear direction in terms of are we still considering the the design from the spatial needs assessment? Are we venturing from that? Are we going out for architect first? Like uh, there's there's still a, a little bit too many unknowns for me to be able to confidently provide uh, numbers to that okay. extent. Thank you. I, I keep coming myself, but just a sec, Councillor Gilmore, I'll get right to you. I keep coming back to the direction that we gave previously about um, you know getting the drawings done or you know concept drawings um, it's hard to make any decisions or make any you know um, estimates uh, like uh, Mallory said in regards to cost or anything at all until we have something to work with and so I, I'm of the, the thought that uh, that's what needs to be done first and then we sit down and we start hammering out the hard stuff um, but right now we're still we're still at the point where we're going to do you know looking for some concept drawings, and from that we can draw pricing and, and the rest of it. So um, I think we're just a little bit ahead of ourselves in one sense. But anyways, Councillor Gilmore. Okay, so to that point, uh, what what is wrong with building the building that we need to house the equipment and uh, and all the with all the new uh, safety and uh, the area for cleaning and de decontamination, et cetera, at Chambers Corners and maintaining, uh, maintaining the um, ad admin and uh, training, et cetera, in the, in the current station too, which we all know has to be uh, re uh, renovated anyway, and there's gonna be a cost to that. So, what is wrong with the idea of putting, of putting just the equipment building to house the new equipment that we need, um, you know, which which is can be made, you know, big enough to house everything we need, have the showers, have the air, the the separate area for all the equipment, and keeping admin in a building that we already have, that we have to renovate, and we know we have to renovate it, um, and and cutting that bill down at Chambers Corners to the $2 million mark, which, which I already know that um, can be done for that number. And it will be lots large enough and, and expandable. So that's, part, that's question one. And do we know whether EMS is coming or not? And is the region going to pony up their $1.2 I highly doubt it because they're going to be coming back to us for all the money that they're not getting this year for years and years already. Um, they're going to be asking for more money from everybody in the region, not less. So, but maybe they're going to figure out a way to bring their 1.2 million and how is that going to happen? So there's two questions in there. You can take them one at a time. Well, I, I'll answer the uh, EMS one. Uh, they're off the table. Um, we've gotten to that point where uh, we, they just, we said, well, we're moving ahead without you. There was no, no comeback uh, from them. So uh, nothing for EMS is what I, my understanding last I spoke. Uh, and Morgan, I'll let you look to the other question. Or Will, you want to speak to it? Three, three Mr. Mayor, maybe first, uh, just ahead of uh, the, the chief, if I could comment. And uh, I, I guess Councillor Gilmore's um, question actually strikes to the heart of the sort of uh, facility uh, uh, assessment and, and needs assessment that was undertaken um, earlier earlier in the year. And actually, I guess it, it even commenced well before that as part of the overall project, going back as far as the original uh, reports identified um, through the fire, uh, the fire studies back in 2012, 2016. Um, I, I guess my initial answer is um, that if 
that is the sort of direction um, that, that council's looking at. It really changes the scope of the way the fire department and any, any sort of fire department um, operates um, in a sort of day-to-day uh, -day basis. Um, so you're, you're basically proposing, um, I, I think, uh, basically creating a big winger um, where it's a garage that houses um, uh, some, some vehicles, uh, but all the sort of uh, manpower related stuff, the training, the emergency operations center, uh, the, 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 the sort of ele other elements that were identified in the assessment um, would be located in another, in another place. Um, and again, I, I know that there are inefficiencies associated with, uh, with having items like that separated by distance. Um, for example, train, attempting to do training, uh, and, and again, I'll, I'll look to the chief to perhaps follow up, but looking to do training um, with, with men often requires equipment and access to equipment and having the, all the materials in one spot so that you are not uh, taking a group of uh, 40 individuals, for example, or, or, or 20 individuals from um, a, a bay that would have all the hydraulic equipment or the extrication equipment, uh, bringing that all to a central location um, in, in Waynefleet Village, for example, the current station, doing the training here and then returning all the materials. Uh, again, there are inefficiencies, but the sort of answer is, if you wanted to go through that route, I think it's a matter of redoing all the, all the uh, facility assessment requirements that were undertaken and sort of looked at back in January, um, which we had intended to bring forward as, uh, as was in, indicated by the chief to a design uh, expert to be able to pr put some figures to what is being proposed. Um, I guess that those are the comments I would like to make at, at the moment and maybe the chief can build on them. Thank you, chief. Yeah, to, to build on that, I mean, certainly, I mean, the whole the whole uh, exercise of going through and and outlining the needs of the township uh, and the needs of the municipality with with regards to this building. Um, uh, again, it's it's not only is it meeting the needs of today, but it's also intended to meet the needs of the municipality for many many years to come. Um, you know, specifically with the EOC, we have our current EOC is in the council chambers, um, and our backup is in the community hall. Um, in the event that, you know, we have a, a declared emergency in both of these, I mean, we're in the same parking lot. Uh, if one building's decommissioned or, or, or uninhabitable, un the other one's going to be too. So what is our backup? Well, the whole intent was to have the EOC at the new building. Um, one that is large enough to, to properly operate out of at a full capacity, um, that is not, um, you know, publicly accessible because you don't typically want uh, public knocking at the emergency control group's door. Um, you know, you, you still want the township to operate uh, with as minimal impact during the emergency. Um, so that's just one piece, you know, as, as uh, the CAO alluded to, there is uh, inefficiencies in having all of the firefighters go get the equipment, go to a separate location, only to have to go back. And it, it's, it, I mean, we're, we're talking about extra fuel costs. I mean, we're, we're, we're now maintaining uh, two buildings, um, as opposed to, and from an administrative standpoint, we already know that from a, an accessibility standpoint and from uh, an efficiency, town hall doesn't meet the needs of the existing town hall. Uh, you know, we, we don't have the space for an accessible washroom. We don't, and, and when we look at the long-term plan for, for AODA compliance, there's not enough space for all the staff. So, I mean, even, even from a response model, um, you know, not having, your two, essentially your two full-time staff, five minutes down the road from the fire hall really doesn't make sense. I mean, there's countless times I walk over and I'll run the pumper to the call myself because that's just how daytime response works. And we've done an incredibly good job at dropping our response times and increasing the level of service to our community by having the staff buy the equipment ready to go. Um, I, I just, we're, we're kind of taking a step backwards when we've made all of these steps forward uh, and certainly, I, I understand the concerns. It is a large number. I get that. It, I mean, I'm, I, I'm not happy with it, 
but my my largest concern is not doing it right the first time you know for far too long i mean whether it be uh, the OFM coming in and doing a review, whether it be training records, equipment, over and over and over, the community has looked to the firefighters to step up their game and serve the community incredibly well, and they have. And they're still working out of a building that's 75 years old. Um, you know, there is known health and safety concerns for six years. We have continuously asked these guys to wait and wait, and it's going to happen, you know, but all while asking them to do more with less. And, and it's unfortunate, I get it, but now's the time. This council has the opportunity to do it right the first time. Yeah, I want to circle back to, sorry, I want to just before you, I want to circle back to the, to the EMS thing. My, my recollection, I could be wrong, but I, um, I thought that the, the 4.5 included the EMS portion. So, was it really 5.7 if EMS came along? And mm -hmm. okay, well, that's even worse. All right, carry on. Oh, yeah, Councillor Van Vliet. Councillor Van Vliet. Um, I'm just, I want to play off what the chief said about having EOC in a different building. We've now just twice during our term almost had to implement that with the floods out of the lake twice. And now with, with COVID, so that's a, an example right there where it needs to be in a separate entity. We need the extra space, God forbid, if anything was to happen. Am I wrong? Am I right? Someone help me here. Chief? So, I mean, right now our primary EOC, if we were at full activation, is in council chambers. So, I mean, we've now been fully activated going on two months. Um, essentially, you'd be asking us to set up the EOC, tear it down for you guys to have a council meeting, set it back up, tear it down. I mean, just staff time alone to do that. So right now, I mean, luckily, because it's a health emergency and it's a pandemic, we're operating in a half staff capacity and we're able to do it at a boardroom one. And again, that's only, that's only really working because we don't have public in the building. Boardroom one is typically used two, three times a day where right now, if this was open to the public, that room wouldn't be accessible either. So, I mean, there are certainly uh, spatial constraints to how we operate. And, 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 and you're right, Councillor Van Vliet, I mean, you're right. I mean, we're, we're at a point where in, in just a matter of a year, we're, we're looking at three uh, potentially, um, you know, emergency activations. Uh, and, and I'll back, I'll, I'll kind of answer one of uh, Councillor Crudland's questions. She had asked about, you know, what is the, the maintenance cost? Well, to be quite honest, there was an engineering study done in 2015 that highlighted over $100,000 worth of work to the two halls each, and none of that's been done because they've been promised a central hall. So, I mean, to kind of go backwards, if we're looking at renovating these buildings and still doing this, it's still going to be that money. Councillor Michello? Oh, sorry, did you have a follow-up, uh, Councillor Van Vliet? Okay, Councillor McClellan. I have about three questions here. But let's let's just go. First question: We know what the cost is. All we have to do is look at what other fire halls cost per square foot, and we can get a ballpark really, really quick of what this is going to cost. We don't have to go out for a, a design or anything. They're all built the same way, or go, awfully close to it. That's question one. Question two: To the treasurer and the CAO, if we don't get any grants, how much does our tax increase? to the public to make our town run to the budget we're at today. If there was no grants at all, no tax grant money, no nothing came in except for what we raise in taxes, how much do we got to raise the taxes to the, to the townspeople? Number three, you say you go in chamber councils or, or um, the first boardroom one. Why aren't we over at the, the skating rink that shut down? There's a more room and a senior's room that nobody's in. You don't have to move a thing, and we can shut that down anytime we have to. Yes, I'm sorry for the seniors for a, a week or two or a month, but we can go in there. It's a separate building. When the house burns down next door to you, the next two houses aren't out of commission. The, 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 I, don't, I don't buy this, guys. Well, you got to use some common sense here. We, we don't have the cash. Okay, thank you. And I'll look to, the first question again was, uh, look to the chief to answer that, please. 
Uh, with regards to question one, um, can you please repeat? I don't remember if that. Yeah. So the cost per square foot, the last time we put it out to tender, we had a price. I know it was $433 a square foot. I know that was high. I don't know what the, the last two Camden Fire Hall was per square foot. It's really easy. Just call and ask. They'll tell you, and then we can figure out what it was. But ours was $433 is what we were quoted. Yeah, so, so the global cost for those, for those most recent builds is about $400 a square foot. So based on the 11,000 square feet that was identified in the spatial needs, that's where the 4.5 come from as global cost. That is building construction, FFE, site finishing, and contingency. Oh, yeah. Okay, I don't have the plans in front of me, but we're bigger than 11,000 square feet. But by 500 square feet. Okay. Uh, the second question you had, Councillor McCullough? Without any grants from any upper tier level of government, how much would our taxes go up? And I look to the treasurer there for that uh, difficult question. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, to all of council. So I don't have that number right in front of me. I will, while number three is being answered, I will look that up. Our gas tax, we receive about 193,000. Uh, and our OMPF has been reducing by uh, at least 15% per year. Um, so they've been uh, softening the blow on that one for us, but uh, that one is continuing to de decline. Um, but that's in uh, around 500,000. So I will look up the exact number uh, and get back to you. Okay, thanks. And, and just give us a percent. I, I don't need to know the dollar value, just a percentage. Okay, and your third question, Councillor McCullough. So we are in the council chambers and you move. We are in boardroom meeting one and you're moving. We have two rooms at the arena, the mall room and the seniors room. That for the last two months has been shut down. We could easily have set up there once and stay right where you are. And if it happens and Maybe we got to shut down the seniors room for a, a month or so. And I'll look to the CAO uh, wants to answer that one. And perhaps I'll, I'll take a first stab at it and hopefully uh, the chief can back me up or provide additional information. But uh, it's more than just an empty meeting room that, that we are required to, uh, to operate. Like there, there's technical support information, documentation, there's access to technology that we require during meetings. Uh, again, in this day and age, uh, technology has progressed significantly. Um, I mean, we're having Zoom meetings such as the one we're having now, uh, but we, we don't, all those facilities, for example, at the arena that we have, don't cur are not currently outfitted to give us the same sort of capacity that we have, for example, in the boardroom or in the council chambers for that example. Um, there are some upgrades that would have to be made to any of those locations. And you designate those locations as either the EOC primary or secondary. You invest in those rooms so that they are able to uh, deal with, uh, again, whether it's the partial EOC group that, that we currently have meeting, or when we have a full blown emergency and you have other groups such as police, you have groups such as uh, the, the ministries coming down. Um, we need to be able to accommodate those additional bodies as well um, and provide for all their support from an IT and other perspectives. So it, it can be done, but you have to prepare for it and you have to have those facilities correctly outfitted to, to move forward. And they, I'll let the chief add to that. I, I had a few others, but yeah, so, so I mean, when you look at the Emergency Management and Civil Protections Act, the, the regulation that follows that with regards to municipal EOCs, uh, you know, back to, to the CAO, certainly you have to have, um, you know, sufficient communications um, um, facilities uh, provided. Um, but remember that, that the more room in the arena would only work in this type of emergency where it's a pandemic and things are closed to the public. Um, that's where it works. If you look at our emergency response plan, again, it's, say for instance, it's an ammonia leak. We have the arena, the community center, and town hall all within the quarter mile evacuation radius, as well as the 200 people that are in the immediate uh, isolation distance that would have to evacuate. 
So that's the one piece. The second piece of that is you don't want your EOC to have pub to be publicly accessible. So say it's a tornado, we've already listed our arena as our reception center. So where, where Red Cross would come, set up, take in the uh, intake and be a temporary shelter. The last thing you want is all of those evacuees with direct access to the EOC group. Um, that's not how you properly manage an emergency with the understanding that the township still has to operate to meet the needs and offer the services that the, the community expects while managing the emergency and the response and recovery. So that's why, yeah, we have all of these, but that arena is closed only because of this particular type of emergency. I understand that, but there's nothing saying we couldn't close the mall room or close the whole arena if it was required. I mean, we could put, I'm going to guess for $25,000, we could get you all the stuff you need in those two rooms and not 45, 450000 that we got to spend for that room in the new fire hall that'll maybe never get used, God willing. Okay, and I'll look to Councillor Van Vliet. Just to, just to play off that, Councillor McCollin, um, being in the Moore room and the seniors room for forever, as Councillor Gilmore can contest, the technology in there is absolutely useless and would need a lot of upgrading. Plus, if, that, if, if the arena is your emergency evacuation, where's your EOC then? Because if there's a flood out of the lake, that's where people are told to go, to the arena. So then your, your emergency team is, has no space now to go anywhere. Let me ask you a question. We had the worst flood at Halloween. How many people were in the arena? Well, none. There's, there's your answer. But that's just one flood. That and how many people flood? Okay, okay then, so let's, let's okay. keep it to questions and, and not get into a... A debate okay. uh, that could really get going here. Um, <laughs> thank you very much. Uh, any other questions? So we're in a difficult spot here with this for sure. Um, there's varying opinions about, uh, you know, it's a lot of money. And I know, personally, I, I don't want to spend that much money. But at the, you know, the flip to the coin is though that. Um, We've all looked at a standard fire station. We all believe that that's basically what we need. Uh, there's a, a lot of standards to meet nowadays for safety purposes, uh, cancer reduction, all that. Then it's, it's all well documented. Um, I don't think there's a doubt that we need a fire station. It's just getting to the point where we can, you know, agree and get a shovel in the ground. Um, so, uh, Further discussion, further questions? Uh, Will, you looked like you were going to say something there. No? Okay, Councillor McClellan. Oh, yeah. Was Will go going to talk? Will go wants to talk. Let Will go. Yeah, go ahead. Um, go. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yes. Um, so I guess the point that I wanted to make is that um, I think the mayor has hit the nail on the head in that um, the, the project ahead is daunting. It is, it's, it's a major significant uh, uh, effort on behalf, of, on, on the part of the township um, to establish um, a facility, as the chief has pointed out, that is intended to serve the township for the next 70 plus, 100, 100 years, whatever, whatever the case might be. Um, no one wants to spend more than they have to. Um, and again, certainly from, from a staff perspective, we, we've pro provided some initial estimates that have been incorporated into a budget um, based on the needs assessments that have been undertaken to date. Um, the next step of the project from, from a process perspective would have brought back to us um, some more fine-tuned costs, some more fine-tuned options about how this project could move forward. Um, realizing that we are going to have to debenture um, for any project of this magnitude. And 
I guess the point that I'd like to make about debenturing, understanding that you don't want to spend more than you need to, and staff certainly don't want to spend more than we need to either. Um, but from an affordability perspective, carrying a debenture is a, an appropriate and a prudent way of paying for this type of expense. Um, this is an expenditure that is going to be serving the township for the next 50, 70, 100 years. Um, I, I've had discussions with, with, with staff, um, with others. I'm, I'm not going to be here 50, 70 years down the road. Um, there will be people, however, in the township 30 years, 40 years, 50 years out who will be receiving the advantages, the benefits of having that station. And having them pay towards it is one of the functions or one of the features that debentures uh, provide. It puts the cost of facilities such as this on future generations who are receiving the benefit of having that station in their, in their area. So I, I guess the caution that I would make is we don't have a final dollar figure in place yet. Um, the next phase of the, the analysis or the study would present us a, a firmer cost estimate. Um, the, at that time, council could either revisit its needs assessments, revisit to bring that cost estimate down, and then proceed to market and try to build. And then whatever the dollar figure is, again, for budgeting purposes, We've said it's 4.5 million now. If it comes down less, that comes in less than that, then we have some benefit there. Um, and council has the ability to trim that even further. And then finance has developed a sort of plan, if you will, to phase in those costs over several years such that there isn't a huge immediate impact, but rather it's staged in slowly in a declining way so that it's affordable in the end to the municipality. I, I, I throw that out for your consideration and am ready to respond to any questions, staff are as well. Thanks. Okay, Councilor Gilmore. Okay, well, we've established a few things here that um, it's $400 a square foot, give or take. So the only way to make it cheaper is to make it smaller. Otherwise, there's no point in spending a whole ton of time or money on getting somebody to draw something and then telling us that it's $400 a square foot, which we already know. So if, if we're not going to move on the size, then we don't need to spend, spend too much more time trying to calculate how much it's going to be. Uh, that, that number, we have already have that figure. So... That's my comment on that. My question uh, regarding, uh, I just have a question to Will and or the treasurer regarding, um, I heard that um, possibly MPAC is not gonna be uh, moving forward with their assessment in uh, increase in, in 2020, is that correct? Yeah. So that, so I see the CEO nodding. So that, that uh, immediately adds probably close to half a percent that we'll have to cover that we won't get for growth in, in this year. Is that not right? Like we we would get 4.4, 0.5% or half a percent in assessment growth. So if they're not gonna, if that's not gonna occur this year, then do we forego that to the benefit of the taxpayer, but to the detriment of the township? Or, or am I not understanding? Look to the, uh, look, look to the treasurer, please. So through you, Mr. Mayor, to Councillor Gilmore. So um, half of that, half of that is right. So yes, they are holding off uh, and staying constant with the values in terms of the assessment. So um, the assessment values will not increase. However, the assessment growth that you're speaking of is a uh, new assessment. So it's added assessment, which is from um, building permits, any new construction, uh, which has still continued like there's still some that they're capturing from 
uh, into 2019. So there, there will still be the limited, I mean, we usually only have about half a percent, um, but there will still be those kind of growth figures, which are due to um, not necessarily new construction of single family dwellings or, or any other type of construction, uh, but even decks or sheds or, or anything that's an improvement to the property that MPEC captures because we report to them regularly is, is encompassed in that figure. Um, so in a perfect world, if our budget figure stays the same and assessment values stay the same, or even if our budget figure goes up and assessment values stay the same, uh, the burden to the taxpayer is equal. Um, so only in a world where assessment values don't increase at the same rate uh, is when there's discrepancy. So if we increase our budget by 1% and there's certain taxpayers that have had increased assessment by 5% per one or 10% per, per one, then that's where the discrepancies come in because we still need to raise the same amount of money and it's, it's divided out amongst our assessment base. So if you've had a, a larger than average increase uh, in terms of a, a property owner or a larger than average decrease for whatever reason, maybe damage or something like that, uh, then, then you'll be kind of the anomaly in that figure. So, so am I, is it correct that, that, yeah, I understand new construction drives assessment growth, but also uh, the ongoing increases from M impact. So that figure that you give us every year, um, growth from assessment is a combined number of new and ongoing impact uh, reassessment. Is that a fair statement or not? Or, or uh, does so three, impact Mr. Mayor have anything to do with anything? <laughs> yes. So through you, Mr. Maritall of Council. Uh, so impact does have anything to do with something. Um, the figure that is presented there is from new construction only. So it doesn't impact the reassessment. So the reassessment impacts everyone, which everyone's property will be adjusted up or down based on current value as of a specific date. So at this point, MPAC has said they, they will not be making that adjustment for 2021. They haven't received any notification as to the date, the point in time, uh, which they will be assessing as. So even for 2022, let's say, they'll be given a, a date. So it will be as of this point in time, what is the value of that property? So they haven't been given that yet. But in terms of assessment growth, it is purely growth. So it's new construction or additions um, or improvements to property is all that's encompassed there. It's, it's not from any reassessment figures. I think Will wants to talk next. Okay, uh, look to the uh, CAO, had his hand up. And again, just to build on what the treasurer was saying, the two are completely independent for all intents and purposes. So the assessment growth will occur whether or not there's a re town-wide or region-wide reassessment. So th those are two separate issues. Um, with respect to your first point, uh, Councillor, uh, regarding um, the square footage which could potentially be known uh, and the needs assessment that was undertaken to tell us we needed 11,500 square feet for the station. Uh, your point is well taken. Um, the, the way or, or the, the approach, if you want to um, uh, revisit um, total cost would be to reevaluate your needs assessment and determine whether there are certain needs that don't, aren't high enough of a priority that you want to include them in the new build. And I, I know that it's, it's, been, it's been reviewed so many times now, um, but there is an opportunity at this stage, if council is looking at um, reassessing things to the, the appropriate way, the process way to do that, would be to take a look at that needs assessment that was already completed and identify needs that perhaps aren't quite as high as, uh, as, as you believe they were then. So, so working off the $400, let, let's, let's use that as a baseline. Working off that $400 a square foot, I believe will give us a building that will last 
75 years, say. Okay, that's the kind of quality we should get. So the CAO's point is right on. Um, rather than, than you know, reducing uh, the ability of the fire station to respond or make it, maybe we need to make it just smaller, same quality, you know, good quality, but just make it smaller and see if we can get that price down. And, and maybe that's where we need to go because, uh, you know, where we're going now, we're going in four different directions. Um, and so we're not going to get anywhere. We're not going to land on anything uh, the way we're going. So, um, Councillor McClellan. That is what I've been saying for two months. But let's just make it smaller. The, there's, there's parts of there, and that's why I suggest we do it in two stages. Build what we have to have today, and when we have the money, add the rest on for the EOC or whatever we have to do. But let's get this fire hall built in a price tag we can afford. That's all I've been saying for two months. The one thing that I, that, you know, like I, I, and this is me, we're all different, right? But the one thing I look at is I don't want this building in 30 years to, you know, to be uh, in need of repair and we're spending, you know, $200,000 a year fixing it because we didn't do a good job in the first place. That's me. I feel strong about that. So, you know, I, I we don't want to give our children a crappy fire hall that they got to turn around and spend, you know, another $3 million to fix it or build a new one. So, and I get four and a half million is a lot. Of, it's too much. Like I, I'm with everybody on that. I'd love to see the thing put up for $3 million and do our needs and do everything that we need to do. And that's where I am. So can we get there is my question. So I get many hands going up. I'll look to the CAO first. Um, I, I think again, the mayor has, has sort of hit it on the head. Um, and in response to Councillor uh, McClellan's point, um, you're never going to have the money. Uh, you, you've mentioned it yourself. We have millions and millions and millions of dollars of infrastructure that needs to be addressed townwide. Um, we have bridges that need to be done. Uh, we have uh, culverts that need replacing. We can't. We can't tackle. We can't build half a bridge. We can't build half a, half a culvert. Um, from a fire hall perspective, again, we, we look at the needs, we identify what is a need, what is not a need, and we try to get the best price that we can on that. And I, I think that's what we're trying to do right now. Um, and at, at the stage that the, the debate that we're having now, uh, I, I think I heard the mayor say early that it, it, it might be premature that we're having um, the discussion about it, it, it's too much or it's too high right now. Um, with the assessments that's happened, um, and I know we, we've sort of identified that 400 seems to be the going rate, but until we've actually had the professional design guys come in, look at things, um, identify opportunities for savings, um, if, if it's a professional that's done fire halls in the past, they may be able to take the experience that they've developed from those other facilities, um, correct the mistakes that have been made in the past, and, and, and develop a, a system that is more cost effective for us. Um, I, I, that, those would be my comments at this time. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Cridlin. Thank you, and I, again, I just want to thank everybody for the discussion. It's uh, it, it's just it's just difficult, and I think uh, you know we're we're doing our best. Um, so what I heard from the CAO is that in terms of process, which I dearly love, uh, a needs assessment is the right way to trigger a change of council at the moment, perhaps, um, and or then uh, alternatively let it go the next step. Um, but I think we would be back to revisiting the needs assessment to then bring in the overall price if that's our concern. So, um, you know, it, it, I think we're going to be looking for something under the 4.5 based on, you know, the discussions that we're having, uh, but in respect of the needs. So, um, I don't know, I don't think I'm ready to make a motion, but uh, uh, you know, I'm leaning into, is it appropriate to do a review of the needs assessment perhaps next, uh, independently or together, 
or and or then otherwise proceed with this the next design step and maybe the option there is to come back with um you know an a like you said a b c maybe it's good better best something that obviously we're looking for something smaller so we're looking for that designer to actually cut some areas as well so uh, i just will throw that out there then for the discussion thank you again thank you councillor mcclellan so you talked about maintenance it doesn't matter what we build this building out of we're going to do maintenance on it in 10 years in 15 years in 20 years every you're going to do maintenance once you get about 10 years of free ride and then you start your maintenance and it doesn't matter what it is and the cost goes up every year we can do another needs assessment story it could be i i'm guessing the chief and, and deputy chief did the one we have now and and that's fine they did a great job we could hire somebody who then may come back with a lot more space than than you came up with uh, and but you might hire somebody that comes back with slightly less or a great deal it all comes down to what we're going to spend how, how much we can afford and like i said i uh, okay so i wasn't going to say this but i'll bring it up i got a building priced out without parking lot septic beds any of that were around 1.7 million dollars and the the barn part the garage part is 800 square feet bigger than what morgan has asked for and there's 4,000 square feet of office space and that we can that's 1.7 and now you got to add your parking lot your septic beds and that it's not redoing the barn that's there this is just for this building the it's 6800 square feet in the garage part morgan so there's 800 square feet more than you need so maybe some of that goes into training rooms i don't know but we're at 1.7 and it's a it's a hundred year building just as well yes it'll need maintenance in 10 years and it'll need maintenance in 15 years the same as if it was brick if it was made out of granite you still got to do your maintenance okay thank you um is there any other questions discussion so what i'm hearing the, the on the uh, the motion here there was quite a bit to it uh, in proceeding i don't think we're going to go down that road um what i'm hearing more is oh councillor van vliet sorry sorry i don't know can we make the motion to just proceed and have morgan go get costs to see what we're actually looking at here if it is 4.5 if it's 3.5 he knows what he needs so can we go, can we get some estimates here? You mean uh, to, to go ahead and proceed with the direction that we had in February was to staff to engage a firm, develop preliminary designs by using the spatial needs assessment and prepare comparative cost estimates. Because that's, that's what the we- the direction we gave them in February. I'll look to the CAO, has his hand up. Three, Mr. Mayor, if you were to, as a council, Cease any further discussions this evening. That is the direction that staff would be continuing on. Um, the, the latest staff report, again, you had three reports before you today. Uh, the first two were received for information. And the third one was trying to move the project forward with uh, some different methodologies for construction and all that sort of stuff. Um, if, if you don't provide that direction, um, that is left hanging. but you really don't have to take any further action for us to sort of continue direction that was previously passed by motion uh, back in February. So um, in that regard, you don't actually have to give us that direction. Um, really, if you want to change things, that's really the direction that you need to do if you don't want us to do that, if that makes any sense. Thanks, Will. It does make sense. It's just, I don't see us going anywhere right here. We're kind of at a stalemate and we don't have anything to compare anything to. So if we just get some drawings, get some buildings that the chief is going to do with the direction we gave him in February and go forward because we've approved everything else. So I'm sorry, I just find it, I just, I think we're, we're stuck. We're at a stalemate. I don't really see a for the stalemate. 
Yeah, we back in February, back in February, we all saw with clarity the next step. And I remember we voted on that and we said, well, let's get some drawings and get some prices. Just like you would do if you were making your own house, you would say, well, I don't know what we're going to build, but let's get some drawings and some prices and figure out what we're going to do. And that's exactly where we were in February. We all saw that clear. We voted on it and it went through. And that's where actually staff has been working on that, uh, moving that all forward. Um, but what's happened is uh, that number's come up and uh, it, it's uh, raised its ugly head and all of a sudden we're all uh, concerned. Um, but we don't even know what the drawings are yet so, or, or the prices. So I think we're putting the, the cart before the horse in many ways here. Um, this conversation, if, if, uh, if um, the chief comes back to us in two or three months with three or four designs, that's when we would be having this kind of a conversation in my mind. I, I think we're just ahead of ourselves. Are we gonna build this fire hall in 2020? No way is that thing gonna get started this year. I highly, highly doubt that. I mean, you know, we've been going already a, a year on this and uh, it's getting frustrating, but we're all getting our points in and it's all important. So, but um, the next step forward is to get some drawings and then we can start saying, well, this maybe should be a little different and that should be smaller and we can, we take this out, we can cut out this or, and get it down to a price tag that we can agree to. That's how I see it. Anyways, Councillor McCullough. So, Again, I agree with you. We know what the price is. We know it's $400 a square foot. So the question is, we know how many square feet we got. Are we going to spend that? Or are we got like, it's $4.5 million. Does that include all the furniture? Does that include everything? Like, where do we go? We, I, I don't see anything in there. We're going to need a uh, communication style. That's $125,000. I don't see that anywhere in, in, involved in it. So it, that, the, I, four I, and a half, that four and a half, is everything. It's everything. It's, it's furniture. It's, it's, uh, it, it's all of it. It's so I look to uh, Mallory there, um, has her hand up. Thank you. Through you, Mr. Mayor, to of council. Sorry, I was actually making hand motions there, but, uh, Oh. Yeah, it's, uh, so in speaking with the chief, this is actually turnkey. So it has, um, and he should probably speak about this because I have no idea about the technical components, but all of the air packs that they need, the uh, <laughs> cellular towers. Um, trust me, because I grilled him very hard on this uh, when he was proposing it to me, asking if that was the bottom line, bottom line, bottom line. Um, so I'll turn it over to the chief maybe for him to clarify on that with the, some technical background. Yeah, so I mean, when, when we look at the uh, the proposed budget that, that was gone through, um, you know, when we look at the, the, the FFE, it, it's fixtures, finishes, and equipment is, is, is a little higher in a fire hall than normal. I mean, when you look at, um, uh, you know, like just a, the bunker gear washing machine, I mean, one of them is 20 grand. Um, you know, that, that's not going into a typical office. Um, same thing with the, the uh, air filling station and the high pressure compressor. I mean, you're, that's another $80,000. So, I mean, these are all the things that are built in. Um, I mean, office space, I think we've already discovered that, you know, a workstation is 3,600 bucks. Um, but I mean, it's, it's a matter of how many of them are, 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 does council want? You know, is it, is it just gonna be the deputy and I? Is it not gonna be us? Is it gonna be the fire prevention officer? Is it gonna be the, the training officer? Like, these are all the things that were previously discussed and approved. Um, so I guess the question is, I mean, if, if we're looking to cut space to save money, that's fine with the understanding that we're going to do a, a phased approach, which is a great idea, but understand that a debenture breaks up that repayment over many years. If you say, hey, we're going to build this in phases and, and it's, it's up to the next council or two councils from now to build the second phase, well, now you've just handcuffed them to a $2 million or a million and a half or whatever um, uh, a bill. Whereas right now, the repayment we're looking at 240 to 300, depending on whether it's serial or amortized. So, I mean, when we're looking at a long-term financial strategy, understand that we also have debt that's coming off the books during, as, as we progress through, through future. I mean, the arena is going to come off eventually. The three trucks that were bought in 2018 is going to come off. These are all parts that play into the, the greater financial picture. 
And, and I mean, if, if we're looking at, uh, if we're looking at what's best long-term and not having to, to tie down other councils, I mean, let's face it, we're, we're kind of faced with this mess due to the lack of, of ability um, to progress in the past. Um, and I just, I really worry that, you know, I get it. It is a large number, but I think, you know, through the funding model, uh, through the, the financing model that Mallory's presented, it's, it's proved that it is in fact affordable. Um, I, you know, when we look at, uh, when we look at, you know, what the repayment is, um, based on census data, I mean, we're talking less than a, a dollar a day per household, way less than a dollar a day. Um, I'd like to think that if I didn't buy my Tim's every day, I could afford the fire hall. That's really what we're, what we're talking about. Okay. Um, thank you. So I'm of the opinion that we should uh, just allow the decision we made in February to go forward uh, to get some, some drawings and some idea of expenses and find out what, uh, what we're looking at. And then, then we could probably have some very robust conversations about, uh, you know, what's needed or anything that can be cut out. So, but that's my opinion. I'm, I'm, I'm open to other discussions, of course. Anybody else? Councillor Van Vliet? I agree, because we're just going to keep going around, around, around. Okay. Uh, one question to the um, treasurer, or sorry, just uh, um, to, the, to Mallory. Um, the debenture on this can be stretched out even further than 20 years, right? And thereby reducing, yes, more paying more in the long run, but, um, but reducing the annual repayment, right? Is that uh, possible or is there a set amount or a set time from the region on repayment? So through you, Mr. Mayor, to all of council, no, it's, it's entirely flexible. So the way that I proposed it uh, kind of in the report was 15 years for the phase one of the project and 25 years for phase two of the project, just so we would have some of our repayment limit free up uh, within 15 years. And I mean, if, if we were ready to proceed with the project and and I was making a recommendation, I would also recommend a, a serial loan, which would also be favorable and set future councils up and residents um, in a really good position in terms of the payments are a little bit higher at the beginning. You're tackling more of the principal right up front. Uh, the cost of borrowing and the interest costs are lower over the term of the loan. Um, and then you have that asset uh, for years in the future. So that's just one scenario. There's, there's many scenarios that we can run in terms of the term, um, splitting it up into larger amounts in two different loans, to shorter term to try to pay it off faster. There's, there's ample situations. This was just with budgeted amounts. Um, and since it was kind of easily broken out in phase one and two, I used those as kind of the, the, the line in terms of 15 and, and 25 years, because I know uh, a sticking point is having this debenture for, for years into the future and for the impact that that will have on future councils. Uh, so that's why I kind of split it up that way. But really, uh, the majority of the burden will be experienced uh, during this term of council, and you, you will have positioned the future councils uh, well, in my opinion. Um, so yeah, that's, that's definitely all flexible and we can come back with different options uh, once we proceed. This was, this was merely just an affordability exercise at this point. Okay, um, Councillor Cridland. Uh, thank you to you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I guess it's to the treasurer, um, but uh, for me, this is the first time I've seen this payment schedule uh, to see how it blends and see the the different options, um, perhaps others have seen it prior to this. So, um, you know, to go through the requirements and to go through the, the process that we've been going through, uh, you know, again, this effort to me is more transparency, uh, you know, to be able to uh, see it laid out fully. Um, so again, for me, it's brand new in terms of the financing component at the full 4.5 million. Uh, notionally, we had a number, I think maybe at budget time. Um, so I wanna thank uh, the treasurer for putting that together. Uh, so I'll have, I'll have a lot more questions on the financing 
um, in terms of affordability. I, uh, you know, I appreciate that the treasurer has now provided a professional opinion about affordability. Um, I think that weighs heavily, uh, you know, for the residents. Um, but I'm going to need to do, I'm going to need more time on those numbers because, again, it's, this is extremely large in my humble opinion, um, having not done this kind of uh, work in, in my daytime career. So, I would, uh, you know, I would ask a question now. We've got a 2% number that, um, uh, you know, is stated to be affordable. So is there a 1% number that we could blend this out? And so council would be looking at 1% uh, blended amounts over the next however long. Uh, we can take that offline, but again, just um, you know, just knowing that we're in something for me that's large, so the numbers part of it will be I'll I'll, uh, I'll go offline and uh, try to be that as efficient as I can on that. So thank you. Thank you, uh, Councillor Cridlin. Okay, are we uh, exhausted of uh, discussion and questions? Anybody else? So, uh, Will, if we want to just leave it as is, um, this is just my thoughts, uh, the direction that we gave in February for staff to uh, develop some design or go to a, a company and get some preliminary designs, uh, pricing, et cetera. Uh, we don't have to do a thing, right? That direction's already been done and approved. Correct. Okay. So, um, What's the appetite? Go, go ahead, Will. I was just going to say, what's um, the appetite if anybody's in favor of doing that? So, Three, Mr. Mayor, I was, was going to suggest or comment, uh, and, and perhaps the deputy clerk could chime in as well. Um, you do have a motion on the floor regarding that final staff report, 007. Um, in that final staff report, if you, if you proceed with it, you're, you're sort of committing to a certain course of action. If you perhaps withdraw that original motion that was read a little over an hour and a half ago, um, then you could um, just receive report 007 as information at this time. Um, and then if you, if you leave it at that, then staff are continuing with the um, uh, original direction from February. Um, if council wishes to move in another direction, uh, again, I think we've identified a variety of options uh, over the course of the evening. Um, then that, that sort of alternate direction could also be given at this time. Um, for example, reviewing the assessments or, or whatever the needs, that sort of thing. It's up to yeah, council. Thank you. Yeah, I knew that that motion wasn't going to be going anywhere because it was very conclusive. Uh, so um, I look for uh, the mover and a seconder on that to um, withdraw that. Uh, I'll look to um, Meredith, please. So if count, if all of council agrees, we can withdraw that motion by general consent. Okay. So if that's the way you want to go, then I'll just need all of council to. Yeah, I, I well, I'm going to guess that it's going to go because it's all got the contracts and all that stuff. So is there general consent amongst council to withdraw that motion? Yes. Hands up. Everybody in favor? Uh, share. Okay, so that motion is withdrawn. Okay, is there any appetite? Councillor McCollum? So I would propose that we get conceptual drawings that will give us a layout, the side views, front side, east, west, and that'll give us enough to figure out what we're doing and get a price on. The insides of it, everybody knows what you're looking for. So, but it's the outside conceptual drawing and square footage. We know where the thing, the square footage price is. So let's get some and see what they are. And, and Morgan, I'm going to ask you to please take a hard look at the, the space that you're asking us to build. You know, if you can shave off some square footage on that, please do. Um, you know, but let's look at it. The safety part is all there. There's a whole lot with this emergency command center that's going in that I don't know that I buy. We need all that space right now. But for the health and safety part, I have no problem about it. For the guys' clothes, the bunker gears, the washing, the st equipment storage, I have absolutely no problem with it. I, the rest of it <clears throat> seems like a lot of money we're spending to sit there as a hen case. And anyway, okay, that's my you. suggestion. Thank you. So, um, Chief? Uh, so, so uh, certainly that, that I understand that. 
um, just understand that w when we went through and did that spatial needs assessment, that was also uh, conducted by uh, comparing the Ontario Building Code for minimum size requirements for occupancy. So, I mean, certainly uh, you're asking me to, to go smaller and, and that's fine, um, but it's not like we were really larger than what the building code would allow anyway. So we're then looking into changing the programming and, and what the actual need is. Um, and I mean, I've certainly I've presented everything. So, I mean, at this point, it's really council's decision as to what the need is. Okay, thank you, Councillor Van Vliet. I would just like to proceed with the needs that we have and Morgan get numbers on that instead of changing things because then it's gonna come back to us again and then we're waiting again. So can we just go from where we were in February and go forward? Thank you, and, and that's what I've been saying all along. I mean, we, we passed that in February. We had you know clarity on that. We knew what we had to do. And that was, let's get some drawings and let's get some pricing and then we go from there. Um, I would suggest that that's what we need to do tonight. Let that process happen. Uh, we're not committing any money uh, any, you know, to any building or anything like that. What we're doing is just doing our homework, finding out what we want to do or what we need to do to meet building code, safety standards, all the rest of it. So uh, if everybody's in agreement to that, that's what I would like to see happen and uh, there's no motion required. We passed that already back in February. So uh, is there anybody contrary to that? Okay, seeing Councillor McCollum. I, I, I'll say it again. I, we gotta cut the price down. We gotta cut the size. There's only one way to do it. That's for the next, that's for I'm the only next one person. But that's for when we have the drawings in front of us and the concepts. That's when we can say, okay, now we need to get a little bit tighter and, and hammer out the dollars. So um, nobody wants to spend four and a half million bucks. We're going to try to cut corners everywhere we can. So, but um, we need some drawings in front of us to work off of. Go ahead. Uh, I, you're not asking for full sets of drawings for building. You're asking for conceptual drawings. Concepts. Yeah, that's all we're asking for. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, it says right in the thing that we to engage the firm to develop preliminary designs and concept drawings concept so that's that's where we're at that's where we were in february so we're right back where we were in february so that's it. if everybody's in agreement with that i'll we'll ask the chief to carry on on that route which is uh, where we were before and then uh, when he comes back to us uh, whenever with those drawings that's when we'll sit and probably have a fairly robust discussions about what we need to do. Uh, so I don't see, uh, nobody's opposed to that. Is there any other discussion this evening? Okay, we- uh, Chief wants to talk. Oh, uh, go ahead, Will. Chief, actually Chief, actually Chief. Oh, I thought your hand, went. okay. Yeah. No, sorry, Chief. just just part of that last, uh, that last direction was yes, the concepts and the, the estimates. Uh, but the second part to that direction was a public meeting. Um, and so when we, when I previously contacted the design firms uh, to do up these concepts, part of that whole scope of their work uh, was to develop um, the, the uh, kind of the, the concept boards uh, for the public meeting. Uh, is that still something that council wants us to, to do? Councillor McClellan. I would say no, because the way it's going, we're still not gonna be able to open up to the public. We may have to just put something in the newspaper with two or three designs and let the public put our email addresses on them and let them make their comments. So why pay for, to do all that work? Because they'll pay, you'll pay for that and they'll wanna be there with you to explain it and there's a whole price tag for it. Well, and that's the initial concept, the, the initial estimate that I got back to do this exact work included all of that. Uh, mm -hmm. including them presenting to council the, the concept. So uh, certainly there's some cost savings there um, if, if you don't want to, to go the, that direction anymore. I personally am not in favor of a public meeting. Um, everything we're doing is, is out in the public. Um, you have a public meeting with those boards and next thing you know, we're gonna have 10 people with uh, 10 different opinions and then we're gonna to have to try to, to bring those opinions into what we're doing. I believe that 
we were all elected to to represent everybody which is what we're doing and i think that you know we're being as careful as we can be i mean you know over the dollars of this and to me the public meeting just will make it longer the process gets more complicated and my opinion is we do not need a public meeting my opinion um who had their hand up councillor mccall yeah i i differ with that opinion as far as i'm concerned it's the public's money they should have some say in what we're spending it on okay thank you is there anyone else oh uh mallory that's so three mr mayor Tall of council um just to to comment on that yeah i mean considering the pandemic the public meeting is is obviously not feasible um but there's no reason that we still can't accept comments from the public uh, via alternative measures. Um, but the, the reason that I wanted to comment was back to uh, Councillor McClellan's previous question in terms of if our funding um, was discontinued. So gas taxes is, is equivalent to 3% uh, and our OMPF funding is equivalent to 6.5%. Uh, okay, thank you. Okay, so um, I guess we're drawing to a close here. There is cl no closed meeting this evening. Oh. I'll go ahead, uh, Madam Clerk. Uh, you still need to uh, make a decision on the Chief's report. So the motion was withdrawn. Now we just need a motion to receive it for information. If right. that's the way the Council wants to move ahead. Okay, so um, that's right. Uh, report FSR 007-2020 project delivery methods and draft central fire station project charter be received as information. Mover seconder, please. Move Councillor Van Vliet, Councillor Gilmore, and uh, no discussion. We've had lots of discussion. Um, I look for a recorded vote. Councillor Van Vliet. In favor. Councillor Gilmore. In favor. Councillor Cridland. In favor. And Councillor McClellan in favor that is passed thank you um so there's no uh, closed meeting no rise and report uh if there's no further business this evening uh, this meeting is now adjourned thanks everybody that was good discussion for sure <laughs>